if you don't have any other questions, Peggy, let's just, let's dive in, you know, so we can get back to, we're recording okay. this inauguration day, so we can get back to watching the inauguration. Um, that sounds great. I uh, am thoroughly impressed. It was very difficult to narrow down questions for you. I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of topics I wanted to talk <laughs> to you about, um, but I think specifically, thinking about what we're all kind of dealing with right now, you're internationally recognized for your stress and anxiety reducing techniques. And I want to talk to you about work-life balance for people right now. Um, it's changed a lot over the past year. It has altered. Um, and not everyone has done great with it, me included. Um, what do you see from a stress perspective when it comes to work-life balance people are most struggling with right now? You know, that's such a great question. And I, I think, you know, having endured the challenges of 2020, I think the biggest thing that we all sort of needed to come to grips with is how to manage fear. We were all in such fear that really shut down our ability to function properly and make good decisions. And then we had all these lifestyle changes. Now we were suddenly working from home virtually and our kids were home being schooled virtually and you know, just so many things changed. So I think the biggest thing was being aware of the fear and what we could do to change that, mm -hmm. but also developing that work-life balance that you just pointed to. So it's about creating boundaries when you're working, you work and you're in that mode and in that environment and you dress for it. You know, what I saw actually a lot of my Zoom calls were people looked like they just were in their pajamas with their hair, like they just woke up and right. came to the camera out of bed. And I understand it's a change using electronics in the way that we have, but it's just being able to um, adapt. And that was the biggest uh, thing was really tapping into our resiliency and being creative in that adaptation process. So I think we had to learn ways of tamping down the fears, the frustrations, the worries, and really be able to interrupt those patterns. Because once we got caught up in them, we kind of got stuck there. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the big takeaway that we learned from 2020 is awareness and deal with what we have to deal with and create balance. How do you, you know, it's, you can feel stress, it's physical, you can feel anxiety, like your body doesn't lie, but how do you go about <laughs> explaining to someone how to pinpoint where that's coming from? It sounds like it's easy to identify, but sometimes it's really not where that source is. So how do you help people identify where that source is? That's a really good question. I, I think the biggest um, challenge is, you know, recognizing the difference between stress and anxiety. So mm -hmm. stress is is more pinpointable. Oh my gosh, I'm so stressed I can't pay my bills, or mm -hmm. I'm so stressed that I'm, I can't make this deadline, or I'm so stressed because I'm getting married or I'm having a baby. These are all stress points that again, when we're mindful about them, we can deal with those stress points better. And in some situations we can prepare for them because we actually know we're going into a stressful situation. I teach a program in public speaking excellence. A lot of people who do public speaking are stressed about getting up in front of an audience. And so if you're aware of that, you can prepare for it and there's things that you can do. Anxiety though bubbles up from fears from the worries, from the frustrations, and it's kind of stress on steroids. Mm -hmm. So it comes more from uncertainties and an uneasiness and apprehension leads to things like panic attacks and other kinds of disorders. And one of my big pushes this year is really helping people develop mental wellness strategies. And there are so many things that we can do to once again, once we recognize, oh my gosh, I'm feeling so anxious, I'm shaking, I'm nervous, I'm not thinking clearly, I'm not sleeping well, all those kinds right. of things contribute to an inability to function and be productive and really be who we are. So mm -hmm. it's understanding, I think, those differences to begin with. I think you can identify stress more easily. Anxiety is a little more subtle, but again, there's things that you can do to mitigate it. Yeah. That and that, it, so that kind of goes back to your first answer to the creating boundaries, you know, like going back to that work-life balance 
Um, one boundary that I kind of pulled was, you know, getting yourself together as if you were going to work, you know, putting yourself not only mentally in that space, but physically in that space as well. Are there any other tips or wellness techniques that people can do to kind of help? I mean, going into this year, you know, you want to say like 2021 turned over a new leaf and we're, we're, you know, we're fixed and we're not, we're, all of us are in a, are very, very similar situations that we were in 2020. Yeah. Um, and so what are some of those techniques that we can help set boundaries for ourselves to, to mitigate that stress? Well, we're all a work in progress. And so it's really identifying strategies and techniques that you can implement in your everyday life that you can really default to, that it becomes a habit. And so it takes sometimes practice. Things like developing mindfulness, being aware, you know, if the kids are screaming in the other room and you're in a work mode, it's important that you stay focused on the work mode unless they're in, you know, physical danger. Right. Um, so, so it's learning how to, how to stay focused and things that can help with is again, mind station can really, and doing other kinds of just mind body integrative programs. And there are so many to choose from. And even things like developing affirmations. Um, these are just positive statements that you use to reinforce how you want to show up and how you want to function in any given moment. So if you're feeling stressed and you're trying to get focus, you can just come up with an affirmation that brings you back into the moment. You know, I'm, I'm present with what is, I accept what is as is, and I'm productive. Mm -hmm. And just stating that to yourself allows your cells to really respond. So it's finding uh, strategies that resonate with you, that fit into your lifestyle, that you can begin to adapt as a habit. So you default to those positive habits rather than to the shutdown of what stress or anxiety might do to you. What's happening. Yeah, I, th I think it's important to note your website as well, because in, in researching you and looking at your website, you have a lot of great resources there. You know, of course, not everyone can just call you up when <laughs> they have a question, um, but you have everything from books to your blog. Um, so I think it's important for people to, to, you know, know to go to your namesake website, because there really is a lot of great information on there as far as mitigating stress and, and developing those habits. Thank you. I, you know, I do. I, I really, I'm so passionate about wanting to help others and not to have to suffer or struggle. We, we can enjoy life more effortlessly and we can do it by trying some of these different techniques. So I do have a lot of free meditations on my website. I have a gratitude meditation to stop anxiety, which I actually developed at the beginning of the pandemic yeah. um, to try to help as many people as possible. It's only about 14 minutes and it's really heart centered. And it really helps you just come into the present and let go of things that aren't serving you. And I'll be honest, I found that I was using it every morning because it just really helped me stay grounded and stay in my mind-body integration, which is really the key. That's when we function the most optimally. In fact, I just had a huge uh, Zoom meeting with uh, about 200 different wellness uh, wow. professionals all over the world. And Dr. Richard Cormona, who was our 17th Surgeon General was speaking. And he talked about how really the optimal is that alignment of mind, body, spirit. And so there's a lot of techniques and strategies that we can use to achieve that. Yeah, we just, I talked to a gentleman in the spa industry recently, and he was talking about a big trend he sees coming up is the the alignment of the spiritual and the alignment of the scientific you know oh, the yes. the it's it's not just science and it's not just you know spiritual and meditative it's it's this intersection of both and how he sees that really taking hold um now for a holistic approach versus just no, I, the other Totally agree. And actually that's, I've trained in Eastern and Western traditions for that very reason. So I totally believe in that integration. And now more than ever in 2021, we are able to tap into more Western um, techniques of uh, a 
accumulating data and real scientific information to show the impact of many of these more spiritual practices like meditation, like even one of the things I'm a huge advocate of, and I, I trained with a world-renowned yogi master in yoga nidra, which is a yogic sleep. And studies have shown that just doing 20 minutes of that is equivalent to three to four hours of deep REM, rapid eye movement sleep, where we really restore, renew, and revitalize. So, you know, had we not had the scientific impact to be able to evaluate that, we, we would feel good doing it, but right. now we have it more quantified. And that's what we're seeing, that, that intersection of technology, of health opportunities, and being able to blend it with many of the spiritual practices that have been around since the ancient sages. Mm -hmm. And now we're able to even see their efficacy more poignantly. I mean, you can feel it, but now you can also quantify it, you know, mm -hmm. through the data. So it's pretty cool. That is cool time. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great pivot into sleep. Obviously us being a bedding company, we are big on sleep and sleep and stress and anxiety have a a love hate relationship for sure. Um, and you had mentioned before, but just, I mean, we love to drive the point home, but just how important is sleep when it comes to stress management and, and anxiety, just how important is sleep? To be honest, I think it is one of the most important factors. And I think we tend, especially in our country in the United States, to minimize it. You know, we always compromise on sleep. And sleep deprivation leads to all kinds of disorders. You can't focus, you can't think clearly, you don't make good decisions. The release of stress hormones like cortisol makes us crave carbohydrates. So then we gain weight and then we don't feel very good because we don't like that, how that feels to gain weight. So really the average does seven, eight hours of sleep. And it's really, really important for productivity, for performance, for health and well being. I actually, I work with a client um, who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm. And we get on these Zoom calls because she's in another part of the country. And I can tell when she says, oh, I've had a really bad day. I really didn't do well today. I know she hasn't slept well. Mm -hmm. And her coping mechanisms are completely compromised when she doesn't sleep well. And so I've been pointing out to her things that when you don't sleep well, here's what you need to do to change that. Yeah. She, what can you, what techniques, I mean, you've mentioned some on your website, some of these more relaxation, relaxation, meditation techniques. Um, but we often talk about quality sleep and then there's sleep. And a lot of times people have to just get in the right mindset to achieve quality sleep. And so are there any techniques you, that you can share with us or where we could find them um, that help us achieve that that calm, that tranquil state that then leads to quality sleep. I think that's so important what you've just pointed out, Jessa. So it's really about developing a pre-sleep routine so mm -hmm. that at, at the end of the day, you can really wind down. So it's about not having caffeine late in the day, not eating a heavy meal, not exercising within a certain period of time of going to bed. Um, turning off the digital devices. Uh, most of them have that uh, blue light that actually stimulates the body into thinking it's daytime and I need to stay awake and alert. Yep. Um, there are apps that can help change that, but barring that, it's important to just turn all of that off and really um, do things like take a warm bath, uh, read a calming book or listen to calming music or do a meditation like a yoga nidra mm -hmm. or just a, a, even five minutes of just calming the nervous system helps. And then the things that I recommend are really making your bedroom conducive to sleep. So it should be dark, it should be cool. Um, it should be absent of noise, so it should be quiet. And of course, bedding is really important. You need a good mattress, you need really quality bedding so that it's really supporting the comfort 
of going to bed and being able to really support your sleep. So all of those things I think can really make a huge difference and really, really essential to get good quality sleep. It really makes a difference. And so I, I would really encourage people to um, you know, write some of these factors down so they can really begin to implement it for themselves and really begin to stick to some kind of a schedule in doing that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we have a saying at Nolapelli where it's wellness while you sleep. That's what we want to yeah. kind of kind of help that it doesn't stop once you're asleep and that we go to work when, when you're resting. Um, but yeah, getting to that restful state though, you got to get there first. <laughs> right. But you know, that's a great, I love the sort of slogan because um, you know, while we sleep is really when body and mind repair. And that's why sleep is so crucial and so important. And actually there are different times of the night, the circadian rhythms actually work to restore different organs. So, you know, if you don't go to sleep, uh, you know, until midnight or one in the morning, you're actually compromising some of that repair time for certain organs. So, you know, again, really important to put all of that together, but I love that saying. That's really beautiful, Jessa. It's, yeah, I can't take credit for it, but <laughs> <I'll use> it. <laughs> I will use it for sure. <laughs> and then, so our last question, we always ask everyone this, um, what is one thing you do for your sleep every day? You talk about these techniques that other people can do, but what is one thing for you, Peggy, that you do every day for your sleep? So a great technique that I like to do in the evening um, within maybe an hour of going to sleep is just lying on my back, putting my feet up on a wall. So I'm in a perpendicular angle to the wall and just lying there for 10 or 15 minutes. It's very calming for the nervous system and really very beneficial for a lot of internal organs. So simple technique and um, it actually helps people who have uh, digestion issues and neuropathies. And so it, it helps a lot of imbalances and I just find it very relaxing to do techniques with that. And that of course is also really important, um, breathing techniques and just being able to really be conscious about your breath and be able to really take in larger breaths and exhale more fully so that you get rid of those toxins. Do you know that almost 75% of the body's toxins are released through our breathing? And a lot of people breathe very shallowly, so they're not getting rid of those toxins. So even just sighing before you go to bed, you know, as you're lying in bed, getting ready, just taking a few deep breaths and just letting it go that can also help to signal your nervous system to just calm down and to get rid of those toxins. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know that. It That question, it seems so simple, but I swear everyone has a different answer for that. And that's goes back to your initial point. Wellness is different for everyone. You know, sleep is different. Absolutely. For Which, you know, finding what wellness is for you is the key. Finding what resonates for you and just incorporate incorporating into your daily lifestyle so it doesn't become another chore or another task but right. just becomes part of what you do like getting up and brushing your teeth in the morning you know make it simple it doesn't have to be complicated it just has to be good choices mm -hmm. what a great oh and let's just end on that what a great line <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, I can't thank you enough for I know this was a short chat but you have such a uh refreshing presence about you. I, I, I feel a bit renewed. <laughs> like, um, talking. Oh, well, good. That's, that's the point. That's what we're yeah. all about is sharing that positive energy. And, you know, the more we spread it around the world, the more we all benefit. We benefit yeah. from one another. So yeah. I appreciate well, your time and your questions. Oh, Great questions. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us.